nation shall rise against nation. We have so much going on with the political wars that we are seeing people running, especially out here in New York City, running around naked, climbing up on a big screen, screaming Donald Trump. We have an election in this land that we have never seen like any before. We are seeing weather pattern changes like we have not seen before. We have seen mosquitoes and ticks coming up with diseases that change the DNA and composition of people that we have not seen before. We have seen superbugs coming out that antibiotics you cannot kill that we have not seen before. All of this seems to be happening to a certain people who think a certain way of a certain socialistic group, but nobody's paying attention. We have three times in the Bible, Isaiah told that nation shall rise against nation, Isaiah said it, and so did Moses. So we're going to flip, and we're going to go to Moses in Deuteronomy, where he stated, And the Lord will bring a nation against you from afar, from the end of the earth, which, which will swoop down on you like an eagle. And what nation are we under right now, as I speak, that represents an eagle? And the oppression seems to be double folding. Then we have Jeremiah that sat down and told you. Lo, I bring against you a house of Israel, a nation from afar. It is, it is an enduring nation, it is an ancient nation, a nation whose language you do not and will not understand. Then we have Isaiah. So you shall summon a nation who did who you did not know, a nation that did not know you also, like Napoleon, for example, that went around looking at a lot of the British people and, and Europeans going around looking because they wanted to find some kind of great history, all right, on their sides. And started going around Egypt and places in Africa and started seeing all of these monuments and statues and Napoleon real life example seeing the statue and said holy crap are you serious because he didn't even know shot the nose the lips and everything off of that sphinx because he didn't know it seems like we have a lot of people walking around and still don't know and it says and the nation that did not know you shall come running to you for the sake of the Lord our God, the Holy One of Israel, who has always glorified you. So let's make this clear. We were put in exile for a reason, and that reason is for transgressions of sins, but to also save us. It was said in Romans, shall God bring you in the Gentiles by the material things, all the riches of the world, so he can make them jealous by waking them up and bringing them out of their slumber and their transgressions, which were paid by the blood of their ancestors for their sins. Now, this, this really, 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 really amazes me how we have this whole Old Testament that a lot of people like to stick to, but then they will not ever, ever, ever think of that last little prophet called Zechariah. And Zechariah was from where? The Levi tribe. So let's try to say that you can't have no Kool-Aid without any sugar in your dash or no can't have no peanut butter or jelly without no peanut butter. So my whole point is that if you can't have any of those, you can't have the new without the old and the old without no new. So where does Zechariah come in? Zechariah is sitting right there in Luke, where it sits down and it states that she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth, talking about Mary. Mary had walked over there to go see her cousin. She was from Judah. The cousin was from Levi. She said, hey, I just had a thing. And, and Gabriel came to me because Gabriel was only a messenger. Remember, for all of those that don't know, it was already foretold and written that this was Satan's domain. And like the Lord was going to let him go around and fool 
a nation that wasn't a nation, which was the 12 Arab nations, because all through here in the new and the old, they was described as being wild in the wilderness and wasn't a nation. We have other people who were put into exile, had changed whatever, whatever of their skin, and was put into transgressions also to made to forget, all right? And then all of a sudden came up into a nation because didn't nobody start popping up and becoming nations until the Iron Age. And the Iron Age ain't really start happening until when? The New Testament, all right? We didn't see a lot of this other stuff happen until when? After Yeshua died. And Zechariah was John the Baptist's father. That's right. Elizabeth was his mother. Gabriel had went to Elizabeth, let her know that the Holy Spirit was going to give her a baby. And that was John the Baptist. And Zechariah, since he was already in the priestlyhood running his mouth, he had to fasten his tongue until that given time. So Zechariah and the old jumped right over to the new, and y'all didn't even see it. It's right there in Luke. So we can see Luke what? Luke chapter 1. Just read all of chapter 1. It's nice and juicy for you. All right? But if you want to, you can jump to 30, verse 30, and then they'll tell you. Mary went over there to Elizabeth. She talked to Elizabeth. They had the same thing. And not one time did any of them get put in the chokehold like you will see or hear with the Muslim religion with Muhammad. He was just a messenger. And anytime he presented himself, he always made sure that he said the one true God, thy Lord, all right, the great I am. He would acknowledge the Lord first in his representation because that is the proper way to honor thy father. So with that being said, now we're tying everything in together. Now we flip right over here to Hebrews because that letter Hebrews is for everybody. And then we jump to 11, 13 and it says, these all died in faith, not having received the things promised, but having seen them and greeted them from afar because they were somewhere else in somewhere else in another land. And having acknowledged that they were strangers in exiles on this earth. Because these people just been exiled, they'll have it for a little bit, and then some other stuff will pop off, and they had to get exiled over here. They got put them back in the land, they messed up, they had it, but it was just like an ongoing thing. Why? Because history always repeats itself until it stops repeating itself for that one good last time. For the people who speak thus make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. The people that I am speaking about, they are always seeking a homeland. Because they don't, they, they, they can't even tell you, hey, that's my homeland over there. Franco can go to Paris. Mr. Wallenberg can go to Germany. Hing Long Ping Pong can go to China. John can go back to England. Mr. Gonzalez can go back to Spain. Where can you go? Me. If they had been thinking about that homeland, from which they had gone into exile out of, since the, the land that God had kicked them out of, they would have had an opportunity to return if they had been mindful of it. But as, as it, they desire a better country that is in heaven which is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. Don't, don't worry about what's going on as far as that land, wanting it, because you have been promised something better. Those who are grafted into the grafted of the olive tree that believe, thus thou within the word, by works, because it takes your works, your actions, your everyday movement in order to be saved. And that goes for everybody. Because in the end, you still get that same judgment. Do not come into an understanding that fits your characteristics because your characteristics are human and they do not match the Heavenly Father's. So you must be of righteousness 100%, not 50 Understand the word, understand the truth, understand the separations of nations, which is why I put it out there for everybody to see what's going on with Russia 
and Turkey because it's important that we pay attention not just to what's going on in the homeland but what's going on around us also because every puzzle has many pieces to make a whole. So, blessings.